All right, guys. So I have a D-Link switch here that um, was working, and then all of a sudden, no lights came on. It acted like it wasn't plugged in. So I took a quick look. Um, I noticed that one of the capacitors was bulging on the power board, and then um, so I, I I just wanted to see if that was it. So I I, I just want to show you guys there is. Um, let me get this in focus. So there's this power cord that goes from here, which is the power board, to the main board itself. There's two oranges and two greens, and um, essentially that's just to help with current, because this is a 3.3 volt board with um, two and a half amps, so that's a lot of current. So they split it up into two wires for positive, two wires for negative. And um, I took a voltage on the output of the board directly. And I saw that we were getting around two and a half volts. And um, I, didn't, I didn't check the current. Um, but I, I did notice that the voltage was outputting two and a half volts with the main board disconnected. So that goes to tell me that there's something... Something's not quite right with the main board. So then to double check, I... I hooked up a power supply and um, hooked it up directly to the main board. I gave it the 3.3 volts and it pulled around a half an amp at that and it worked just fine. So that con double confirmed that there is something wrong with the board. And with there being a bulge on the capacitor, most likely capacitors are going to go out. It was a 10 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor. and so it was right next to this guy. So I desoldered it and I put in. Um, I didn't have a, a 10 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor. I had a lot of little 50 volt ones and things like that. Uh, and then I had a couple of uh, big O 6.3 volt 2700 microfarad capacitors. So I put two of them in series uh, to give me the 12.6 uh, volts, which is more than enough. Uh, that surpasses the 10 volts, so that should be actually even better. And uh, that cuts the capacity down to uh, 1350 microfarads, which is okay because it was a 1000 microfarad capacitor. So once again, it's okay. Uh, although they are much larger, um, that that's okay. They're going to fit underneath the cover and things like that. So yeah, um, just check your main board. Make sure your voltage is there. And then check your uh, motherboard, put power to it, and see if that's uh, if that is, you know, double checking, confirming what problem you are having. So here's the underside of the board. I just want to show you guys real quick. Um, be careful when you are looking at the power boards because this side over here is high voltage. There's a big uh, ground plane in between. And that's just uh, be careful when you're poking around. I wouldn't. I suggest not poking around on this side uh, of the board if it's plugged in. Keeping keep keep away from that side. That's you know. I think th there was a capacitor that was 400 volts, and you know you get you got your 110, 1240, whatever, or whatever you're from coming from the wall, and you don't want to be touching and poking around this. You know, I, um, from this side on, it's going to be you know you're under 10 volts uh, kind of range. You know, the output was 3.3 volts. So th this isn't, you know, going to kill you. Unlike this, you know, you never know what can happen. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff here. Um, you know, oxidation. I think that's probably from the factory. I, I don't think that that's, um, you know, anything to worry about. But um, that's the... Let's see if it'll focus. Uh, this is the guy that I soldered and and put the new parts on. I couldn't test it. Uh, you know, it was it was showing when I tested it with the multimeter that it was okay, the original capacitor, but uh, just as a hunch, the fact that it was blown out on the bottom and the top, I figured that it's it's not holding its its um, voltage. It may be holding its capacity or something like that, or maybe the other way around, I'm not sure, but um, it definitely wasn't working right because as soon as I replaced it with these two capacitors, and I just put them in series, like I said before. Um, let's see. So just, you know, 
if you want to put it in series, you put the positive leg in where the positive leg goes in here. And then you take the negative lead of the first capacitor and you put it, um, solder it to the positive lead of the second capacitor. And then the second capacitor negative lead goes into where the negative lead of the original one went into. So that's, that's how you double your voltage of the capacitance. Um, this is more of a, um, if you don't have the right capacitor and you got nothing else to, you, you got nothing else to work with. Uh, this is that that's what you would want to use this for but for the most part always try and use the uh, correct capacitor for a single capacitor so if you got to go up in voltage or up in capacitance that's okay but never go down in voltage or down in capacitance either